you made a comment about it earlier, but I wanted to backtrack and go back to that. I seen an interview you did years ago, and you told a story about how Tupac was on the set of Jews and how Tupac would stop everything he was doing when he would see a single mom and he will give her money and words of encouragement. If you don't mind, my man, go more into detail about that. Pac was able to identify with any hood in any hood environment. No matter what level he was on in the hood at that time. You know what I mean? He can he he would be able to he understand it, adapt to it, embrace it. Whereas others may be a little, you know, standoffish or, you know, well, okay, uh, we're, we're filming here, move right along. Pac, like, hold up, wait. Come here, you all right? What, come here, little man, what you trying to see these cameras? And his attitude, like, no, now, PA, you got to fucking wait. Come here, little man, now you get out the way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's his attitude because it's like, Y'all ain't from here. Majority of the people that's working on the set, they ain't from here. And it's all love on the set. But I done been on the set with motherfuckers and it's been all love and da 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 and this, that, the other. See the same people getting on the goddamn subway and they don't know you from a can of fucking paint. So that's why I always kept it a thousand. I always kept it a band. All my fans, all them, all always know Jermaine always stayed the fucking same. Whether it hurt my career, help my career, fuck it. It is what it is. I'm good at what the fuck I do. Period, hands down. Throw me a role. I'm a, I'm a challenge, most challenging role. I'm a break that shit. I'm like a fucking heavyweight fighter when it comes to that shit. So I don't have to be the motherfucker you want me to be. You see what I'm saying? I'm who I am. I'm who God made me to be. It's a reason and it's, it's a purpose why you know Jermaine Hopkins. And it ain't because I've been around this motherfucker doing extra shit so you can do and remember me and all the fake phony shit and trying to get on certain narratives and shit because that's the wave. Fuck your wave. I make the fucking wave. You feel me? And that's been my attitude. And I got that same attitude from Pac when he set my fat ass down back then and told me, nigga, they need us more than we need them. You know how much money they got tied up in this motherfucking film? You think they can afford to change a goddamn actor right now? So don't come running back banging on my door telling me that they're going to fire me and shit because I walked off the set. Fuck them. Now roll a blunt, nigga, and have a drink. I could never change or deviate from that after that. Because I see it worked. It was real. It was so real to the point, I'm going to tell you a funny fucking story. <laughs> it was so real to the point that one day he walked off the set. So here I go with my little shenanigans. I've always been a play thing because I like to laugh because I'm having an attitude. All this is too much fucking energy. Anyway, you know, so I, I, I come back to the crib. I think him and Latifah was there, you know, just chilling because, you know, she was in the movie. They all on, you know, I think she was fucking with Tommy Boy at that time, too, the record label and shit. You know, uh, no, nah, I don't think she was fucking with Tommy Boy. She got her own shit. But uh, anyway, man, everybody was all, all to the good. So I go banging on the door, pop, nigga, you done did it this time, man. What's up? He just called me Big Chops. Big Chops, what's up, man? Fuck you talking about now? What they talking about now? I said, bro, man. They said, David said he's had enough of your shit. They're rewriting the script. They getting your ass out of here and all of that shit. I just, I, 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 don't, I don't know what to say. I'm just lost for words. So I'm going through the motions like, man, I don't know what we going to do. And I don't know who the fuck they going to get to replace you. Because you, man, the way you've been laying this shit down, man, that, that, that's going to be a hard month. They're going to have to get rid, rid of Bishop completely, period. So... You know, he believe in the shit. Little do I know he's already going through something. You know what I'm saying? Prior to that. Prior to me banging on the door. So the next day he comes to set and finds out that everything I said was all bullshit. You know, they, they had a talk with him about leaving. David, David and Tupac was like this. Uh, Neil always just, 
Neil, Neil was like, fuck that shit. That was Neil's attitude. David it was more, more, more calmer, like, like Tupac, come on. You know, he had the English accent and all of that. So he had that kind of temperament, that uh, Anthony Hopkins type of vibe, a uh, tone, but younger. You know, Neil, you know, blonde, you know, uh, uh, Ferrari driving type, you know what I mean? White guy, like, you know, is just going to call it like it is. Like, he's not biting his tongue. He's not on no bullshit. You know what I mean? I love Neil Moritz is my dude. You know, and he used to tell Pop, Pop, stop with your shit, man. You know, <laughs> what the fuck? We're trying to film a fuck. Are we fucking paying you? You know, and all this other kind of shit. Like, well, I don't, I don't seem to, what seems to be the fucking problem? You know, but Neil, you know, that was, that was, that was Neil's approach, you know, but uh, David took a different approach, but David approach worked better with Pop. Cause you can't give that to Pac, cause he's gonna give it back to you on ten, and then go in this fucking trailer and slam the door and lock it. Now you're locked out of his world, far as he's concerned. <laughs> so you know, uh, he came back to set and found that I was bullshit, man. I got out the van, I'm walking up the street. All I see is Pop running down the street towards me, and shit. I said, "Oh boy, here we go." He done found that I was bullshit. You fat motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, he he wasn't punching me like that. You know what I mean? He was just let me know. Nick, I know you was bullshit. Nick, you know what I mean? That type of shit or whatever, man. And that was one of one of the one of one of the one of the <laughs> one of the best memorable moments there, man. You know, cause after it was over with, man, you know, you know, we hugged and shit, man. Because he was like, man, shit, I'm happy he was just bullshit, nigga, for real, for real. <laughs> you know, and uh, told me that, you know, he had lost one of his homies the night before. You know, when I had came and hit the door, he was, I had just got the news and this, that, and the other. So it was like, I made his night a double whammy and shit. When it, the, the second whammy didn't have to be because it was all bullshit. But, you know, we, we, we bonded real good, man. That was my dude. How do you feel about people that say after Tupac did Juice, he took on a Bishop character in real life? I would say that those people that say that has to be everybody that had nothing to do with the making of Juice. So therefore you did not know Tupac before Juice. So those accusations, I'm here to clear all of that bullshit the fuck up. You know, it's always chitter chat about this, that. Like, y'all ain't even know that boy prior to that. That same Tupac Bishop attitude that y'all see is how that nigga got on Digital Underground. The nigga was a fucking roadie and end up on a fucking song. You see what I'm saying? Like, the dude, like, you didn't know him, so you just felt felt like, okay, you know, uh, 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 that character brought that out of Tupac. No, Tupac brought the Bishop out of the fucking character, bruh. Neil and the motherfuckers had no clue Tupac was going to take that fucking character to that range. They did not have a clue. That was like, oh shit, yes. It exceeded their expectations. So when I hear motherfuckers say that, oh yeah, that, you know, that boy Pac, he start, you know, once he played Bishop and that, nah, uh-uh. Nah, what it did was, after he played Bishop, and that goddamn song drop, it was more attention on them. It's more mics in front of them. It's more shit happening to them and all of that. So you putting a mic in front of a motherfucker that got something to say, don't be mad when he say some shit that you don't like or you don't want to fucking hear. Stop putting a goddamn mic in front of his face after you done took him through all this goddamn turmoil. Now I'm going to put a mic in your face. I'm going to put a mic in the face after you done went 12 rounds in the motherfucking ring and expect you to be able to talk without... <laughs> or sweat. Come on, man. Let's take a pit bull, for instance. Everybody done had them or have them, right? Some pit bulls are nice. You can pet them. They're so friendly and this, that, and the other. Some pit bulls are only like that with their owners and with everybody else. They on guard. But that same pit bull 
that's quiet and friendly and this, that, and the other. Take that motherfucker through something and see, don't you get that same because it's in them. Don't do no shit to bring it out of me. Because once you do, you will have regrets before I do. You see what I'm saying? And now that and, and Pac was a perfect example of that, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the boy expressed himself. The boy showed the the, the entertainment business, the fucking the rap scene, the movie scene, all of that. Like, I don't have to be who they want me to be outside of the character that they pay him, pay him outside the character that they pay me to be. You see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, we can't judge them kind of like, like that. You feel me? It, it just, it, it, it ain't fair. You know, it ain't fair. Don't don't take me through the motions and shit like that. And then every time I look up, it's a camera in front of my face. And you expect me to just have some nicey, nicey shit to say all the time. My attitude and what I, how I am is because a lot of the shit that I done been through. You know, I ain't the best of my fuck. I'm a little rough around the edges and all that, but I'm me. You're going to get the same motherfucker every time. I'm like your fucking microwave. I'm going to do the same shit every time you push goddamn start. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> same dependable motherfucker. You know, and I'm like that. And my attitude is like that because I had to reach a point to where, you know, humble huggy and, you know, well, it's just, just, just be like, nigga, they give me nowhere. People love me for me because of who I am, not because of what I do. When they meet me and it's like, Damn, bro, I didn't think you was like this. You know, and 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 that's where my blessings come from. So I don't switch up. You know, so I'll be the same one. Take me through some shit, put a mic in front of my face like now. I done been through some shit. Y'all know what it is. You know what I mean? Y'all know the lifestyle, so you know what I mean? And and that's that's certain things that was that 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 once again put in a position. You know what I mean? You ain't going to close too many doors on a real nigga before a motherfucker go build a house and make his own goddamn door. Now, whether his motherfucking house is in an unzoned section or whatever the case may be, don't force him to go over there and build his shit and make his shit happen. Because he's going to do it. And then he do it and, you know what I mean, he running a bump or two in the road, then don't knock him. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a nigga that'll jump off the cliff and see if the parachute work. I'm not finna stand up that motherfucker like, oh, I don't know if I should jump or not. Nigga, I got a parachute on. Let's fuck it. Because I already know I might hit a couple of rocks, bumps and bruises, but eventually my parachute gonna open and my fat ass is gonna soar. But if I don't jump, <laughs> guess what? It ain't never gonna open. <laughs> So I'm going to take that chance.